follow up my notes from last week. And how is everybody doing this morning? <coughs> Excellent. Well, how many of you have faith? How many of you have lots of faith? <laughs> well, and this is a great thing about faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. How many of you feel like the devil's been having a heyday with you this last week? Well, I had a nice road trip this week, a little short one, to Florida and back in three days. And it was an interesting trip. I got to talk to a very interesting lady who we don't share the same uh, religious beliefs, but we had a good time and we had some good fellowship. And uh, it was eye-opening and interesting. So I uh, just wanted to share that with you. Now, how many of you know the story of the Good Samaritan? You had the guy who was, had robbers beat him up, and he's laying on the side of the road, and you had uh, a Pharisee go by, come along, and he seen him laying there, and he went to the other side of the road. And you had another uh, religious leader uh, come along and seen him laying there and circled the other side of the road. And this American guy came along, seen him laying there, and he took pity on him, picked him up, and of course took him to an inn, had him bandage his wounds, take care of him, and paid the bill and said, if he owes more than this, before he gets out of here, just let me know and I'll pay the rest. Now, for those of you who are wondering what that story has to do, um, the Samaritans were not looked upon kindly by the Jewish people. So when, Jew when Jesus told this story, it was kind of like, you know, a backhanded slap to him. So there was that going on. What I really like about this story is he took care of this guy. Now, what I want to tell you about today is faith and works. So this guy, this Samaritan, who took this guy and put him in, he believed the compassion that God had put into his heart. And he took this guy and he took care of him. And he, he showed him love, he showed him mercy, and he showed him grace. And he provided for him for his needs because out of his abundance he was able to do that turn with me please to Ephesians chapter 2 chapter 2 and I'm going to read verses 8, 9, and 10 here. For by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God not of works lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now I just read you that. God has prepared for us good works. Now, this is the nice thing about this. God created man from the dirt of ground. You've got the story of Adam. Everybody knows the story of Adam, right? God breathed the breath of life into him. And then he made a garden called Eden. And he put the man in the garden and he gave him a job. So when we get saved, God has a job for us. You guys understand that? When you come to know Christ, you come to know that he has something for you to do. Now, here's the thing about this. We get a measure of faith given to us. How many of you know that a measure is just a little bit? And since you're given a measure of faith, that means you are allowed to build faith. How many of you know that? Very good. How many of you know faith building exercises are not comfortable? Amen. In the middle of one of those right now. And that's okay. Because Jesus is still on the throne. He still loves me. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is going to provide. Amen. And I think there's a whole lot of us in that camp right now. But it's okay. 
faith building is hard. Now the great thing about the faith building is what I just read to you. God gives us the faith. God gives us the grace. We cannot earn our place. We cannot do good enough stuff to get there. And why is that? Because it says in John that we got to get born again. Because we need a new spirit. Because we are bound in the flesh and we're not bound in the spirit. We need to learn that our heart is corrupt. My Bible says that the thoughts and intents of man are only evil continually. I believe that's in Genesis chapter 6. And uh, there's another one that says that the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. I believe that's in the Psalms. On our own merit, we will do nothing good. Amen? We've got to have Jesus to get squared away to do what we need to do. And I want to also point out there's an ownership thing here. Whose workmanship are we? We're God's workmanship. We're not our own. Because a lot of people like to think that they're self-made. Well, um, you got a, evolution comes rolling in here, and I love the evolution thing. Um, because I agree with one part of the evolution thing, the Big Bang Theory. Okay? God said it, and bang, it happened. Because my Bible also says that he spoke everything into existence. Turn with me, please, to James chapter 1. And I'm going to read this here. James chapter 1, and I'm going to start at verses... I'm going to start at verse 19. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. I want you to get this. Receive with meekness the implanted word. How many of you know this is the implanted word? Okay. How many of you know that if you get quiet with the Lord, he will speak to you and he will plant word into you. He will encourage you. But, my Bible also says without faith it is impossible to please God. Now I love this part in the beginning because I read the very first part because it's so good to hear the warning he gives right before he says, be doers of the word. Now, I don't know about you guys, but in my youthful exuberance, I was a fairly wrathful person. My kids, they remind me of that occasionally. Um, when we were coming back from Florida, uh, the lady I was with, who I was moving back here from Florida, uh, posted a meme. And my daughter Stacy said, hey, read this out loud to dad. Because <laughs> I was driving down the road. And it was basically that uh, <clears throat> this person who was wonderful, gentle, kind, nice, and is just such a caring person, you must remember that the beast inside him isn't dead, it's just asleep. And she thought that was funny because when I worked the food truck, we had this little, I was in the midst of uh, finishing out my grief uh, over the loss of my wife, and I was in a, an anger mode. I was angry for many months, and uh, the guy I worked for, I would kind of get a little bit 
fussy and angry, and he would say, hey, put the monkey back in the cage. And that became kind of a catchphrase. Don't let the monkey out of the cage. So my point is, God got me through that. He brought me to where I am. He has provided blessings ever since, just blowing me out of the water. And this is a great thing about this. When we do what we're supposed to do, God does his part. Like Jeff was saying, draw near unto the Lord and he will draw near unto you. It requires us. He's already done all the work. It requires us to step out in faith. And unfortunately, we, and I say me, but I say we, it's so easy to forget God's goodness when you're in the middle of the storm. Because it's so easy to lose focus. <clears throat> but when you hit that spot, or I hit that spot, I found the secret to this. And actually I read it in uh, uh, Reckless Love. But I had already put it into practice before I read it. Which is, when I'm in the middle of a storm, I do two things. I start thanking him. I start thanking him. And I thank him. And then I start praising him. I start praising his works. I praise everything he's doing. And I have found that uh, the storm will start losing intensity under the praise of the power of God. Amen. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Of course we're going to Hebrews, aren't we? I'm just going to start reading here because there's a couple of things we're going to hit on. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, we'll start in verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which were visible. Did you guys catch that? God spoke it into existence out of not okay reminds me of uh, a joke I heard once upon a time where man thought he was smarter than God because you know they figured out how to make a, a man from the dirt of the ground and they said to God we won't challenge you because we can make a man from the dirt of the ground too just like you did he says okay let's both build a man then so the scientists went out and they got him a bunch of dirt, and God got his dirt, and he looked over at the scientists, and they were getting ready to go. He goes, ah, ah, ah. He goes, that's my dirt. You need to make your own. Yeah. Which, of course, they couldn't do. But sometimes we think we're smarter than God when we're not. But God spoke it. That's the end of it. And simple faith is simple faith. Verse 4, by faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and though he being dead, still speaks. Now, when you go to the story of Cain and Abel, <coughs> God came to Cain and said, where's your brother Abel? Which, that, that, the whole thing there kind of floors me. Um, I kind of understand it because since I have raised kids, my kids a lot of the times finally figured out that when dad came and asked him a question, he wasn't asking the question because he wanted to know. He was asking the question because he already knew and he wanted to see if they were going to fess up and come clean. Well, I learned that God does the same thing when he came to Adam and Eve and he said, why are you covering yourselves? Why have you covered yourselves? Why are you hiding from me? Like he didn't know. He was giving them the opportunity to come clean and fess up. They didn't. He gave Cain the same opportunity, and he didn't. 
Let me read on. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was found and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. By the way, Lex, there's your answer. I told you it was uh, in the Bible elsewhere where Enoch happened, what happened to Enoch. I got a phone call earlier this week. I want to know about that. So, yes, God took him, so just like he was. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he, con by which he condemned the world, and he became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. I want you to see a little bit here. Faith works righteousness. Part of the works of faith and the works that come out is the righteousness that you get when you believe. Now a lot of you probably thought I was going to say, you know, if you're going to have faith without works, everybody thinks when you say faith without works, you're going, oh, well then I need to go do something at the church. I need to go back in. I need to go do this. I need to go do that. That may be. Here's the thing. What did God prepare for you from the beginning? Have you asked him? Now some people have ability to do stuff and fix stuff. Other people have the ability to encourage people. Other people have the ability to minister to people. Other people have the ability to teach people. Guys, this is part of the works that comes from that faith. Are, are we getting this? Okay. Because this is pretty cool. This is kind of what God opened my eyes up to here recently. And there's more to go with it than just doing the administrative positions in the church. So let me get back to my notes real quick. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 2. here verse 16 I believe knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law but by faith in Jesus Christ even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law for by the works of the law no flesh shall be justified <coughs> How many guys know what I say when I say the works of the law? That is, the works of the law is not the Ten Commandments, by the way. That's not the law. Those are commandments, okay? And Jesus came along, and, well, I think it's interesting that Adam was given one rule, which turned into Ten Commandments, which when Jesus came along, he condensed everything to two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, body, mind, soul, and strength, which covers the first four. And love your neighbor as yourself, which covers the next six. So the Ten Commandments got, we went from one rule to Ten Commandments to two. Those things are worked into you by faith. You'll find an ongoing theme with everyone who has faith in the Bible. There's this little thing that pops up, especially in the Old Testament. And I read it to you where Noah, and he feared God. That doesn't mean he was scared and terrified. It means he had the reverence for God because he believed me. Now, if you guys think you're having a rough time with your faith, that's cool. Um, I want you to stop and consider two people real quick. The first one is Joseph who was all on his own, being thrown in his prison, being belittled, being ridiculed, yet was shown a vision by God and told him this is going to come true. And it only took like 13, 14 years for it to happen. 
Okay? Then you've got Noah. Because Noah was the only person found righteous on the entire earth at that time. And I believe uh, he spent 120 years building an ark, him and his family, while everybody walked around and made fun of him. So if you think you're having a hard time, you're having a hard time staying faithful and staying geared and staying hooked in, uh, stop that right now because you've got people around you who will be more than happy to minister to you and talk to you because you are not Noah building an ark while the entire world is falling apart around you. Though you may feel like that sometimes. Okay, now we're going to do Galatians chapter 3. say in verse uh, 12 here. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. All right, pardon me, I'll start verse 11. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. If you're going to do the law, you're going to be held accountable to the law, which means you don't get no grace. You don't get no mercy. There is no mercy and grace under the law. You guys got that, right? And if you disobey one point in the law, you're dead. You're done. You're screwed. And nobody can live up to the dictates of the law. Jesus was the only person, and I'm pretty sure Jesus is not sitting in the pews right now. His spirit may be hovering, but he is not uh, physically in the pews in a body. So. And he's the only perfect one there was. Okay, let's go to Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to start reading here at verse 5. For we, through the Spirit, eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, neither circumcision nor, uncir nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Sorry, circumcision was hyphenated. So they didn't hyphenate that. I thought it was a word. So. But faith working through love. Now here's the thing. I've talked to you about faith without works is dead. And here's what God showed me this week. Love is a verb. Love is an action word. Faith is a verb. It's not just the physical things you do that are the works. But the Spirit is working in you. It's doing the work in you. Here's the works. Galatians chapter 5, of course, and 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law okay that's a fruit of the spirit jesus said a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit the works of the law are the works of the spirit that come out of you by faith are love and how many of you know that what corinthians has to say about love Love suffers long and is kind. Right? It does not envy. It does not pray in itself. It does not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It does not provoke. It thinks no evil. 
does not rejoice in injustice, but rejoices in the truth. Love believes all things, love hopes all things, love bears all things, and love endures all things. Love never fails. That's what God's building into you. That's the works he's building into you. How many of you know loving, loving people the way Jesus did is not always easy? That's the same works thing. Having joy is not always easy. That's from the Spirit. And for those of you who are wondering, that doesn't mean you're dancing and prancing around all the time, having a wonderful time. Having joy just simply means that you're not depressed. You're not beat up. And of course, that peace that transcends all understanding. This in Philippians. And of course, long suffering. How many of you know that being long suffering is a work that comes by faith? I know I do. I know Pastor Randy does. Because that's part of what long suffering is. How many of you ever been in a relationship that was long suffering? Kindness. That's a fruit. That's faith. That's a work coming out of your faith. Gentleness. I love Philippians says, let your gentleness be known to all men, the Lord is at hand. That is working out of you. That is coming out of you. That is a work that is coming out of your heart, that's coming out of your spirit, that's coming out of the things that God's doing in your life. Faithfulness. You guys understand that all this stuff I'm telling you is faith and works coming out, right? And I'm, I think way too many people, including me, have always considered that faith by works is something you do. You physically but maybe that's because I have that ability and that's my gift, so that's the reason my brain was geared into that. When God got dropped this one into me, just it blew me away. Gentleness and self-control. I already read that earlier in James B. Quick to listen and slow to speak. This is how Jesus works. He puts his spirit into us. He starts cleaning us up. And the works that come out of us. I've been kind of blown away by many, many things uh, in the last few months when I found out that Certain people's views of me just blew me completely out of the water because they saw this stuff coming out of me for years. The love, the joy, the peace, the kindness, the gentleness. And that's kind of what helped me come to terms with this is what faith and works are along with everything else. It's such a, a beautiful place to be. Any questions? I'm, I'm opening up the floor. Who's got rocks? <clears throat> I'm ready. Okay, I know that was kind of short today, but you didn't need a whole lot to get that one hammered in. It was pretty simple. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come before you and thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit, which you give to each and every one of us. Thank you for the love you bestow upon the entire world, whether they know you or not, Father. And Lord, I just ask that uh, you take this word, implant it, as your word says, uh, that we receive that implanted word in a spirit of gentleness. And Father, that you continue the work that you started. Uh, just continue to draw people from the four corners of the earth by your spirit, that you are lifted up, you say you will draw all men unto yourself. We thank you for that. We believe that. 
It's the Holy Spirit that does the work in us and in the entire world. We confess that and we believe that right now. And Father, we just ask that you praise, honor, and glorify you in Jesus' name.